Yo, 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 it's your friend Dinner Dog. And routing is hard and really difficult to make a video for. There's so many different scenarios and stuff you can come through when racing the randomizer. So um, we're just going to go through a couple today. And um, really, a lot of it just comes from practice, understanding the distances between areas, and um, keeping a few principles in mind. So in today's video, we're going to look at like general routing principles to help you out the, um, that are good most of the time and you can apply to a variety of different situations. Some of them are fairly obvious, but we'll go through them anyways. Um, your opening route. Um, so we're going to go through the, the two typical routes and then um, in particular for the, the standard route where to go from there. And most of this is going to cover the first castle. So the... The majority of your decision making from a routing perspective is going to happen in the first castle. You 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 don't have access to flight to start. The um, there's more like locks and things in your way. The second castle is like it's almost all open for you except for um for maybe Aquadon. So check out video 204 if you haven't checked that out already. But um we're gonna be mainly highlighting the first castle. The um so let's get to it. So yeah, the routing principles. So the biggest thing to keep in mind is the best route can be the wrong answer. And this is particularly the case in casual, the um, where there is like no real rhyme and reason where anything is except for um, following things in logic. But um, you can have the best route and still lose, even if you perform really well. You could have the worst route and still win. Um, I like to say sometimes that every route is a bad route until it's a good one. But, um, but that being said, I kind of looked at this and said, let's look at things to avoid because you're probably going to come across those more often. They're good for principles. So the biggest thing is you want to avoid dead ends. And now you'll be saying, but dinner dog, there's dead ends I have to go to, right? I have to go to entrance, right? For instance. And that's cool. It's just we want to avoid dead ends as much as possible, especially at the beginning. We're eventually going to have to go through a bunch anyways. But um, you kind of want to prioritize areas that are not dead ends. So you can just keep going and, and tread new ground. When you have to go through a dead end, safe splitting can be great if the distance is uh, pretty long, in particular for entrance. Otherwise, just bite, the, um, just bite the bullet and do it. So yeah, avoid dead ends. The big one for me is we want to avoid areas which cannot be full cleared and need to be revisited. We want to lower the priority of, of going to those places, right? The um, And it's a big reason why I don't often go to Coliseum early, even if I have the ability to do so, because generally speaking, unless I have flight, then I'm just making one check in the Coliseum and now I'm at a dead end. The um, I have to come back to, to do the rest of all rocks quarters. Um, I may need to come back twice because once I get flight, then I can go up to a sword card. And I might need to go back later for a transformation for Aurox, so it's not fun. The um, Also, that teleporter in Aurox um, is generally not useful, especially if you haven't done the lab yet, or, or all the checks in the lab yet. So, um, like, it's kind of a gamble to go up there. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Maybe I'll go up if I've got um, just a transformation hoping to, to hit with a... Um, gravity boots and then you can get flight and then you can go through all rocks but even then it's kind of a mess so i'm, I'm not a huge fan of it oh, with one exception I'll, I'll talk about later um we kind of want to avoid areas with a high likelihood to kill you so um so and that includes coliseum sometimes um especially the coliseum teleporter a it's generally a bad teleporter and and b you're likely to die hammer and blade are like the american gladiators of the stone randomizer they're just there to kill you so there's been so many people who have died in that area you may not have a save it's gross oh my god um it's not fun so um and there's a few areas like that the um generally not too many in the first castle but um it's usually going up to Coliseum and then over to All Rocks, and that can be a problem. Even sometimes, if going to All Rocks is the ideal route, if you're going to spend five minutes trying to kill All Rocks and die twice, it's generally not a good idea. Um, and strategize around mechanics outside of your control. So the clock room pillar is, with some exception, outside of your control. 50% of the time it's on, 50% of the time it's off. The um, Obviously, the beginning of the game, you can control that because you've got a good sense of where you are in the cycle, if you're, especially if you're not using the menu a lot, which you probably shouldn't. The, um, so 
outside of the first time you get there, um, as long as you're consistent, then like going back there later kind of sucks going through the pillar. And then money required to purchase a relic um, is also outside your control. So um, sometimes it can make a lot of sense to um, to avoid the library, especially if you have flight, but um, and just come back and do it later. Or, um, or like really just prioritize, I'm gonna do a couple extra checks because I don't feel like I have enough money and, um, and it's becoming a bit of a problem. So um, we do wanna go out of logic when it generally doesn't go against the above. So I don't wanna like rush to a dead end because I can do it out of logic, right? I don't wanna rush to an area which I can't full clear because I can do one thing out of logic, right? The um, it's great going out of logic when it's convenient to do so, and it helps these things, right? I'm going to go out of logic to all rocks because it's no longer a dead end, because I can do it. It's no longer a, uh, or sorry, it doesn't need to be full clear to later on. The um, It's no longer a dead end because I can comfortably go back to um, to keep and keep moving, right? The um, things like that, like, oh, the clock room pillar is open. I can go out of logic and do all of that area is a good move, right? The, um, so you just, it, it, out of logic can be kind of a mess sometimes if you just prioritize the fact that you can do things out of logic, you still want to avoid dead ends, you still want to avoid areas you can't full clear, etc. Um, you want to, I don't, I, I feel strongly about this, and like I've won a couple races because there was all this, but you want to grab fire of bat when you're able to. And you're going through a teleporter anyways, right? So sometimes, let's say I'm going, I don't know. Um, I've taken, I'm at the keep. I need to do the lab loop. So I'm going to teleport to the entrance, right? But it may be good to say, well, I'm going to go past the entrance in the teleporter loop. I'm going to go back to outer wall first. And I'm going to grab fire of bat. Sure, I need to spend a little bit more time in, in the, the teleporter. But um, generally speaking, you've got to go out of your way to get the fire of bat eventually anyways it doesn't take a long time and it's open to you now and it may give you things that help you with the lab loop right maybe it gives you the ring you need to open holy glasses maybe it gives you um jewel of open so you can just continue after the loop and go downwards right the um i i feel that like fire of bat is often missed um and left too late the um, if you're around a teleporter and you're using it anyways, just grab fire of bat and keep her going. The um, obviously if you have like access to library cards and you're just gonna say, well, I'm gonna wait for mist and then library card to mist and then grab fire of bat maybe. But the um, generally speaking, I think fire of bat is a good place to go. The um, it's very close to a teleporter. You probably missed the first time you go through it anyways. Um, and lastly, with seeds and complexity, the um. You ideally want to get the last Vlad as soon as you can and avoid um, doing fetch quests, even if you don't have all four. The um, And essentially with complexity, we want to prioritize um, higher complexity checks, especially ones that are exploitable. That's Silver Ring and Spike Breaker. We want to prioritize those ones when we're able to The um, and hopefully avoid fetch quests later. And there's one other example I'm going to show that I think makes sense after I went through and did a few things for this video. So yeah, this is my general principles. If you're avoiding these things as best as possible, you're probably doing a good job. The, um, the rest of it comes down to a lot of situational awareness that I can't really teach in this video without going through a million different examples. You need to know the distance between point A and point B and your ability to do it with the stuff that you currently have. The, um, so it, it becomes a bit of a mess, which is why like just these like principles here um, can make a lot of sense. So let's take a look at um, two opening routes that, um, that essentially make sense and why they make sense and um, when you want to do them. So the opening, the ideal route that you're going to take is performed generally when you acquire bat early. The, um, or the alternative is you've got like somehow you've got full flight or out of logic flight and you also have a transformation. The, um, it makes sense to go through the castle and you're gonna go through this route here. So you can see green is the route you're taking. Yellow is um, checks you may be doing depending on what relics you have. And then this orange is optional item checks. But um, this route um, is quick it's efficient and, and one of the reasons is because it follows the principles and these aren't my principles like these are just like i'm applying 
what people have done and, and just putting it into words. So please don't take this as my work. But um, generally speaking, if you've got early bat or early flight with a transformation, the biggest thing is you want to grab the lab checks if you're able to, especially if you get bat right at the start. Otherwise, you're going up, grabbing the gravity boots check, and then you're, you are going to Coliseum. You definitely want to go there. You're checking the relic in Coliseum. You're going to keep going. You may open the teleporter depending on um, what preset you're doing. If you're doing OG, you probably don't need it. Um, some of the other ones you may. We're going to go to all rocks. We may save here. The, um, we're going to go down, we're going to grab sword card, we're going to go up and then go right to the keep, which is going to give us a whole bunch of things here. You can see there's lots of optional item checks that you can do, and then we're going to continue along. We're definitely going to grab the teleporter here, of course, go to grab fire of bat. We're going to then go to the library, and the idea is, is that we've done a great clockwise route around the castle. We haven't really run into any dead ends. The, um, or at least major dead ends. You could argue that um, Coliseum is a bit of a dead end, but like it's so short, it doesn't matter. The um, And you've covered a lot of ground, which probably sets you up for success getting to the librarian and having enough money. And we've only gone through the pillar once here. And if you've timed things well, and you're really good at your opening, then you're definitely going to be able to make the clock cycle here. So you're in a good place. So this is the most ideal route. The only problem with this route is you only want to take it really if you're going to fight all rocks. You need to be in a position to do so. So like, you know, if you're going in with just your fist, it's a bit problematic. Although if you have bat, bat's really good against um, all rocks, especially if you have a smart potion or something that increases your intelligence. The uh, wing smash is very effective against all rocks because he has so many hitbox or yeah, hitboxes that you can hit his hands, his head, like his body, all sorts of things. So that can be helpful, but um, but still fairly dangerous depending on your skill level and the situation you find yourself in. But very rewarding as well because even if you don't get anything at all rocks, you're going to go up like a million levels. Hence why we do it so early in um, the um, nimble preset. And yeah, you've avoided all the um, the kind of pitfalls we were trying to avoid. So that's good. And then where you go from here, it kind of depends. The um, so you may you may be going to second castle, you may be going down. It depends on your preset and all that good stuff. But you want to be doing this clockwise route along the castle and then ending up in the library after doing all these fun things and collecting a whole sorts of items and relics and all sorts of good stuff. All right, so then the other route we want to look at is the typical one. So generally we're not going to have flight, the um, in particular flight with a, a transformation to fight all rocks. So generally you're just going to be going through the beginning of the game. The um, This isn't really rocket science here, but I'm going to talk about why it makes sense and why you should do a couple things. The, um, so it's the same route we're going to be going through. Again, grab what you can depending on what you have. Like if you get gravity boots to start, it's fantastic. The um, if you got gravity boots and you can do out of logic flight, it's great to go here. But um, the one thing I like to avoid is the Coliseum. Because again, unless I've got um, flight to get up here and a transformation. I don't like this route. Like, sure, I can get sword card, but I'm just gonna go for sword card. Like, that's kind of gross, right? The um, then I gotta go up here, and then if, if I have, well, I guess if I have flight, I can go and do all these checks in the, the keep. But then, like, what am I gonna do? I gotta go back through here, right? Like, the um, and I've left all rocks behind, and I may not be equipped for all rocks. I personally just love going to the library instead, and um, you'll find that a lot of your seats require this. The um, I, I don't like out of logic um. Coliseum, or even sometimes in Logic Coliseum, the um, depending on the situation. So what I've done here is talked about a lot of what I've just gone through. The um, in particular, the teleporter isn't very good, especially if you haven't got these lab checks, because you're going to have to be doing this loop again anyways. Grab the teleporter later, and really just go into the Coliseum later. The um, and just worry about the the statue once, and then do it all at one time, ideally. The um, so many people die here to hammer and blade, and then like you really this isn't like going back here isn't really the greatest. One strategy I do sometimes is I'll go up with gravity boots, take the teleporter, and then go to the, back to the lab if I've got gravity boots um, down here at the um, very scroll. No, wait, spirit orb. Sorry, spirit orb, and then I'll go back. But um, generally, like it's good for safe logic because you're going up a level in logic. But you also still are up a level of complexity, but you still have a higher complexity check at the library. Lots of checks out here. The um, And the library is fairly strong. You know, you get yourself a good weapon, you go back, and then now you can go and fight um, 
all rocks and all good stuff. The the one exception I, I, I've been thinking about, I haven't done this personally, but I think it makes a lot of sense, is if you specifically have Leapstone and you go to Coliseum early in safe logic. And the reason being is that if you get early Leapstone, Leapstone in logic only opens two checks. It only opens the Colosseum, and it only opens where you normally find Leapstone. So the idea being is if you go up early and there's nothing at the Colosseum, well, fear not, because the next level of complexity, assuming that there's no other um, checks in the library on the first level of complexity, will net you, if you go out through here, will net you the next level here which is either going to be like Flight or Jewel of Open. If you get Flight, that's fantastic. You hit right away to get these two, and then you can continue along in a fairly efficient route. The um, You get this Teleporter, which is good. You could always teleport um, back to the entrance and then go down right away, which would be a good sense, especially if you got Jewel of Open, that your next thing is down there, and then wait on Library, hoping to get missed to only do Library once. So, um, so I think there is a case to be made for early Leapstone, go to Coliseum, if there's nothing there, you can be very certain that there'll be something in the keep and you're just looking to progress your movement faster than anyone else. So I think that makes a lot of sense. The um, And that would be the one exception that I, I'd give it a go. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't do it with just a thrust sword. I wouldn't do it with leap or with gravity boots only because gravity boots can't give you the same level of certainty if you were to get it here at Spirit Orb because it also opens the lab. It opens this check up here in the library. The um, like you're, it's it's more of a gamble in that case. The um, and then typically the other thing is if I just have jewel open, you like never want to go down first. The, um, it's pretty bad. Like you can sort of uh, mitigate your losses by doing a safe state at the top of this shaft, but um, you really only have the Scylla check if you're playing a um, a guarded seed, and then you just have the Merman statue location over here. And then even if you hit with Merman statue location, well, now I'm back at the beginning, and let's say I got Leapstone there, or even either Leapstone or Gravity Boots. I can't go back up the hill. I've got to go back up here. With Gravity Boots, it's not as bad because at least you can do the lab checks. But if you get um, Leapstone here, then now I'm just going to go back and just do everything that I've already done. It's a dead end, right? I'm just traversing through um, areas I've already done. But um, but at the same time, if you want to be a contrarian and you get back down here, then you've won the game, right? But I, I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not a big fan of going down early. The... Um, Especially because you're leaving so many things behind, right? If I don't have the ability to get to Succubus, that sucks. I don't have Merman statue. I don't have a way to get down into the bottom area here. Something like five. I'm gonna go down to an area that has seven checks, and I'm gonna leave five of them behind, right? Like it goes just goes against our principle of being able to full clear areas as much as possible, right? And to be fair, you usually can't go and full clear the caverns and and the mines and all that stuff the first time, anyways. But um, at least get as many as you can, right? And there's probably more answers in the library. The, um, or at least you get some equipment and you get this teleporter, which is convenient, and like maybe you buy some library cards, the um, or or all that kind of good stuff. The um, or or take a different route entirely because the other thing you get when you are um, when you have jewel open first is that the keep is also in logic. So I've got three checks I can do. I'm gonna pri like you're gonna prioritize these two, and then maybe get yourself stuck when and then maybe hit nothing and then you got to go up here anyways. And sure, you could use the safe um, split up here, but now you're going to have to backtrack all this kind of stuff anyways later. It, it's kind of gross. It can be the right route. Again, like your best route can be the worst route. The worst route can be the best route, but I, I typically don't like it. The um, Save yourself some time. Just go and open the door and then continue. Uh, grab these item checks and then continue going the um, to the, the library and go do that. All right. So um, before we end this bad boy off, um, so... In the typical route, you usually end at the librarian and you're doing your thing with them and it's like, okay, well, where do I go now? So generally what I recommend is if you have flight, you go up to keep, so you'll grab fire of bat and go to keep. There's three checks there. Having the, um, having the keep teleporter is very convenient. There's a lot of items and stuff, so it's good. With gravity boots, the answer is almost always go back to entrance or go back to the, to the entrance, go to the lab and then the Coliseum. The, um... With Jewel of Open, you're going to go down unless you can do the Zero Relic um, 
um, movement to keep, which is in video 303. The um, I personally like that route. The um, I understand why some people may not. It's not nothing that's guaranteed. So it's you know it's it is what it is but i like the idea of i'm not going to trap myself in the bottom at least if i get to the keep if there's nothing there i've got a teleporter i've done some item checks i've set myself up um hopefully for better combat the um and and i I've avoided the the horrible feeling of getting down to the bottom of caverns and finding nothing and having to crawl my way out that, that's just gross um the biggest decision i'd say is if you just have leapstone so hopefully, if you just have Leapstone, you can do the book jumps, and then that may be your solution, anyways. The um, and get the um, the checkout of logic in the library for um, for very familiar. But um, otherwise, there's really two areas. The um, so if you go to Colosseum, the big benefit is that it's faster to go to Colosseum and get the next relic than it is to go to Keep and get that relic. The um, you've got to. Um, or at least to check it. Like, if you go to keep, you have to fight uh, across them on the. Um, it's potentially more deadly because um, if you've got low um, armor, the harpies can be a problem. They hit hard without armor, even though they're not um, very um, difficult to deal with. Like, they usually go down to one hit. The sword bros can be a bit of a, a bit of a problem. Cross them on's obviously a, a pushover, but it still takes time to do the fight, especially if you don't have equipment. The um, so Colosseum can can be really quick. The, um, the only problem here is that if you go to Colosseum, you're at the mercy of the pillar, which is gross. So uh, with that being said, I, I, I usually almost always go to keep with, um, with Leapstone. The, um, and like, here's my reasons. It's going to take me a bit longer to get to keep, but if there's nothing there, at least I get a very useful teleporter. The, um, if I get a relic at keep, especially if it's like Bat or if it's um, Gravity Boots, then I'm immediately going to get two more. So it feels really good to hit there. The um, You avoid the time loss potentially to the clockroom pillar. So you're essentially saying that I'm only going to take this potential time loss if I have to. And I'm going to go to keep first because I don't have that time loss potential. And like if you think about it, there's because it's open on every even minute and closed every odd minute, right? There's a 50% chance you're wasting some kind of time there. You know, hopefully it's only a couple seconds, but if it's like that 58 second kind of thing, it's really gross. The, um, it can lose you the race and I'm um, going to keep early first also has more items. So, um, so I, I personally like it, even though you're going to get to your next relic by going to Colosseum, um, faster, especially if you don't get hit by the, um, by the pillar. So, um, I'd say that a lot of people do go to Colosseum first, even though my preferences keep. And, and whichever preference you take is up to you. The um, if you if you want to get that next relic faster, you go to keep or sorry Colosseum. If you're like okay, I can I can I'm okay if I get a relic slower or at least do the check slower. But you may not get anything. It's a card. It's useless. But um, but there's other fringe benefits that I like. I'm gonna take that. The um, it's a 50-50. It's a randomizer. You're never gonna be right all the time. It just it is what it is. So hopefully that gives you some insights. The um. I, I think I'll might do some follow-up videos. Like if you've got routing questions and a specific seed with some movement and stuff, like send them my way. I'll, I'll give it a review the, um, and, and give you the insights, at least in terms of what I would do. The, um, I, I find routing itself to be fantastic and, and the, really what makes the randomizer a lot of fun. Decision-making makes such a great impact on, um, on, on, ultimately, or on the ultimate outcome and, um, and your ability to think, especially on your feet on the fly, which is difficult when you're trying to also play the game at the same time and win a race, is, um, is challenging and rewarding, um, especially once you get the hang of it. So, um, so that's it for this one. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Eh? Cheers. We'll see you soon.